Okay. Okay, then I'll introduce to you Luigi Garona from Russia. His real name is not Luigi, but uh, I care about why you changed your name to an Italian sounding name. It's Luigi. a long story. Right, okay. Luigi was with us last week for the first time in France, and at uh, that time I think you were just attending to normal literature. I think you liked it. And Luigi has multiple sound projects for a few years now already. One of them, which I just didn't like very much, is called droning, about long sound scales, slowly evolving over like 40, 50 minutes. If you go for his homepage, luigiorola.ru, you will easily find it. And I think by now you have some 213 or 217 small compositions. 238. 38 by now, yes. okay. That's what done done that. That. Yes, now all of them are released, but you can go to my forum. Okay, no. so I don't have very little cash yet. And uh, this, firstly, I love it a lot since uh, for me it's perfect to have these soundtracks playing in the background in my room while I do hacking or nail reading or whatever. It's better than rock or pop music because it doesn't disturb you that much. And it's a pure coincidence that he's right now playing my favorite of these tracks, 152. I love that one, so thank you for using this, this one. And now you're going to uh, show us how you produce your domain sounds. Yeah, well, I'm going to talk about the concept of the project, uh, you know, how it's possible. Uh, conceptually, why I thought about it, and also uh, if I'll talk about the technical stuff. And if we'll have time, I have no idea how long I will talk because I've never done any workshops dedicated to project only before. And if we have time, I'll show you, like for example, uh, wheel shifting, which is a lot for many of you are to do. So basically, for those of you who don't know, project droning is a project to produce. Uh, huge number of recordings, uh, which is uh, of, of praiseworthy duration and extreme static nature. So that's the formulation I gave it about I think, three years ago. Uh, right now there are like over 230 tunes. And uh, the project is somewhat known around the ambient community. It's been played at Soma FM, which was really good to know because uh, when you know that, when your tunes are played at Soma FM, you know that you've done something right. So you, it was it was good because uh, I uh, submitted tunes to them, and for half a year they did not respond. And then suddenly they wrote me an email saying, "Hey, we like our tunes. We're going to play some of them." So what they do though is they sometimes edit it out. So uh, my tunes are considered to be uh, too long for Soma FM probably. So they would have like only 2002 edited, and when I listen was edited, it's like instead of 45 minutes, it has 20 minutes. Okay, no problem. So I started sending them 20 minutes instead. So they like that better. Uh, so basically, the project is about time. It's, uh, if, if some of you, those of you who don't know what the project is, I encourage you to go to my website, which is on the .ru, and you will find drawing very easy. So it's like usually about 45 minutes. And uh, it's, it's about time. And to, what makes the project possible, one of the things is uh, the specific um, characteristics of my brain. And uh, I have an ability and or bug, the way you want to look at it, uh, that I'm hugely aware of the passage of time. And uh, although I am sure there are people like that as well, I don't think that there are many of us. So I have... Uh, Basically, for example, this Linux audio conference, uh, you might just sit around and say, hey, this is good, this is great. To me, in the background, there's a process running that says, hey, you will never, ever come back to this again. That's it. The, the, the passage of time devours that experience. And so it may sound weird, and it's very difficult to explain, but this awareness of time moving forward is a very big part of my existence. And so that makes it possible to write the music I do because this is what it's all about. Uh, I can wake up at night, and this has been uh, going on with me since childhood, and it has to be a state of when you're not fully awake. And I have this feeling of, uh, the feeling of absurdity, uh, that uh, the awareness of one's mortality and the understanding that our life is very intricate, we learn a lot of things, and yet, you're mortal. And so, I never experienced dread over it, I never experienced fear, I just, this very strong feeling of absurdity, like, what? That's not good design. So, I had this feeling for, for, uh, for all my life, and this is the, the thing that powers a lot of my aim in creation. Uh, 
people have been asking me whether I've been turning uh, project droning or other music stuff into commercial projects, and I usually say I don't even think about it, uh, because uh, when you're doing projects like that, they're very conceptual in nature, uh, then you want to get away from audience pressure that I think many of you have done good compositions, you know that you have this. Somebody says, your friend maybe says that, hey, this is a great tune, and you suddenly feel the need to produce something of that sort next time, even if you don't want to. And so I'm very happy to not promote my project actively, which I typically don't do a lot, except for Soul FM, which is more like a test of whether anybody else likes it as well. So uh, people obviously from the Linux audio community have also helped to show that, hey, you know, this is good. Uh, some of the project has actually been fed back into the software which uh, was used to write it. So uh, the developer listens to uh, the music, uh, like Wu, for example. Uh, so he, I use Key Tractor to, to sequence that, and then Wu listens it while programming Key Tractor. So there's like an airplay there. Um, anyway, uh, when it comes to projects like that, there's always, well, initially when I started the project, I, I did not position it as art, because this is, uh, many people here probably know that if you start debating somebody whether a book or music is art, that is really an endless conversation. Uh, but typically there are two things uh, that seem to be important when talking about art, and that is uh, context and the amount of skill required to do something. So if you know the, you know, the black square painting, uh, typically people who know nothing about the context where it was produced by Malevich, uh, they typically would say, this is crap. But once you know the context, you actually understand what you wanted to say. And so to me, when, when creating Project Droning, it was very interesting to see whether people who respond to it as a form of art, because I don't want to force it on them. And so uh, I'm still very interested to listen to what people say about it, because I'm not saying it's art. Those are just recordings, and that's why I say those are not songs, those are not compositions, they're just recordings. Whether you want to consider that composition is your own, uh, is your own call. And as for the skill, uh, this is probably the thing that has haunted the computer music community since the invention of computer programs. It's because in the age of computers, it's not very transparent as to how much skill was required to produce something. So you're putting on a tune, and you have no idea whether the composer behind it had to sit there for months, or maybe he just pressed a button and it was generated. And if uh, we go to some sophisticated sequencers, you can see that they sometimes have very cool plugins which allow you to do things like there are plugins which create like backlight sequences. You don't have to do anything. You press a button and you get classical music pouring out to the speakers. And so because we all know that that's possible, it's very difficult to tell whether, for example, Project Droning, maybe all I do is just press a button and it works itself out. And there's always that possibility. So over the years, I found that most of the computer music is very difficult to classify as art. And so that was also a big conceptual underlying of the project. Uh, basically, I'd like to ask you a question. Uh, how many of you actually heard the project? Can you raise your hands? OK, so a bunch of people. Uh, have any one of you uh, noticed the compositional uh, specific characteristic of it? Can't anyone name that. OK. That's, that's good. It's good that nobody noticed it, but it's normal. I expect it to see no hands. Uh, basically, the project is uh, composed in such a way that it is monotone, meaning that if you listen to like about the first 30 seconds, the dynamics that you get is what you will hear throughout the tune. And so uh, the, if you hear a breakdown in the tune, then you will hear another breakdown later in the tune. And that sort of eliminates, that's again the time concept, is that you don't have to worry whether you've listened to 20 minutes of the tune, 40 minutes of the tune, or whether you've listened to it three hours, theoretically. So it's just, uh, it's just like a slice of reality that has uh, characteristics. It's, uh, you can, you can uh, think about it as, for example, visiting a planet that has, for example, if you visit Venus, will very likely see a lot of volcanoes and stuff like that. And it doesn't change much. 
So it's very like, it works a lot like nature. So it just goes on and on, it's very monotone. Uh, the only piece that I actually heard some people say that it sounds a little bit different that uh, sort of a little trespasses that concept is I think only 159. Or, or what, 157? Oh man, I myself don't know what the the. the I thought I, I thought I'd find that easily now. Yeah, what? Okay, yeah. This, this is the tune. So this is a uh, this is the tune that sort of has too much structure, probably. breakdowns and arpeggios and it has structure but here I use the trick of sort of uh, creating uh, some of these blocks and uh, if you have if you have it you have like several things like a bass line uh, something that is, can be considered to be a lead a background and if you want to make it monotone compositionally speaking then what you do is you start uh, you turn off the bass this keeps playing then you turn off that you put it in the bass and so you Several loops playing together, and so they move from time to time. 
and once you get used to the texture, it suddenly jumps but usually quite comfortably and then you start getting used to another texture and uh, because there are two loops playing, it has actually two jumping points so you have one loop playing and another and so that loop jumps, you have a different texture and then that loop jumps and you have another change and so it's uh, pretty interesting to listen to if you know what to look for and so it's, uh, it's probably very difficult to understand when you're just listening like that but. Anyway, so uh, the other thing that I really wanted to get out was uh, the difference between electronic music and note music. And both terms are very poor. And all the time that I've been uh, working with that and thinking about it, I've never came to, you know, I've never made up better terms. So uh, basically, if you give that kind of music to a person who has a proper musical education and he knows composition, he knows how to play piano well, you know, stuff like that. I, I think that many of you have a proper musical education, as opposed to myself. Uh, but uh, you will then probably, they will not get it, typically. They will say, well, this is childish, I mean, what, you have arpeggio writing, writing there? That's primitive. If you've ever uh, been into tracking music, that's the reaction that you would usually get. You would show them some 8-bit chip tune that is very skillfully done and they will not know that there is some skill involved that you actually have to look into the source and that they're like wow look you just used one track for it wow impossible they'll just say yeah that sounds like primitive first class composition to tune something like that and so i've always uh, had that uh, that situation where i would produce something and i would get reactions like that and I would think hey something is wrong here uh, and uh, I started thinking about the fact that there are at least, at the very least, two types of music out there. And you have to do either extend the uh, definition of music or you have to just make them two different forms of art. And I typically uh, favor the latter thing. Uh, so if you have, let me put something uh, in the background. Let's say that we have something like that. We have, we have this kind of tune. Uh, typically, that doesn't sound like real music. That sounds like noise if you think about it. Uh, there's, there's no structure there. It just sounds floating around. But we tend to call it ambient music nowadays. But it certainly follows very different rules than what you would do if you would play something. Uh, let's start with the simple definition of what electronic music is. And there are two ways to approach this. Uh, one way is to approach it from a very classical standpoint. Let's say we want to define piano music. How would you define piano music? Uh, I would define it as music which was written specifically to be played on a piano using all the characteristics that that instrument has. And so that's piano music, that's very clear. And guitar music that would use the characteristics of guitar. And once you want to port one kind of music to another, you will inevitably have to make some uh, choices that might do something. For example, if you perform Moonlight Sonata on guitar, you obviously have to do something about certain moments uh, because that was composed for a piano. And so you can think about the same definition about electronic music, that electronic music is the music which was written to be performed on certain electronic instruments bearing their specific characteristics in mind. And so this, I think, is more electronic music than, for example, trance music. Because if you think about the majority of trance music out there, it's not really electronic in that sense. It's just music that could be played uh, with acoustic materials, but it's played with a synthesizer. It's easier to play with a synthesizer. I mean, imagine a person sitting for 90 minutes and doing you wouldn't, you wouldn't want that, right? So that's, but it's possible. I mean, there's, you, you won't probably lose anything. And there are bands who actually play trance music with acoustic instruments, uh, and also AC jazz music that would show, you know, all of those breaks and cool riffs that are possible with just acoustic instruments. Uh, so uh, the technical thing to know is that when we're listening to Bach or Mozart, what we're really listening to we're listening to preset frequencies on a grid, and that's what it is. 
the, uh, those are just combinations of notes. And for centuries, combinations of notes what, was what we call music. And so I think that the new music, the new type of music, came not with the invention of synthesizers, but with the invention of uh, recorders, sound recorders. As soon as we were able to record sound, we were first, uh, you know, first time in history able to look at sound as something to manipulate. And so when you're listening to, when, you're, when you see sheet music of a piano piece, it doesn't really matter that much. At least it's not on the, you know, the first priority. Whether you want to play with an actual piano or maybe uh, a synthesizer, you just want to play something that has keys. And in fact, if you put it just into MIDI, it might sound good. You might understand some of it. You might not you know, get all the dynamics that a player will be able to get to, to, you know, to deliver, but you'll still get a lot of it. You'll get it. Now, if you have something like that going on, you can't write it down to sheet music because that is sound. It is manipulated sound. And when we had concrete music, that was, I think, the new paradigm, which then made people fail to understand if you go to uh, a place, for example, such as this, and uh, you know things that we listened to yesterday during the concert, that is typically in academic circles called electroacoustic music, uh, which, in my opinion, is a very weird blend of trying to get note-based music, the combinations of notes, together with sound manipulation. And the, I think that the uh, good examples of this are very few. It's like trying to, um, I don't know, to combine two different forms of art. Like you have sculpture and you have uh, painting. Let's combine those two and create a, a statue that has drawings on it. I mean, that's like weird. You can do that. Sometimes that will work. But in my humble opinion, that usually is not the case because uh, Imagine listening to a piece uh, and saying, hey, that's a great melody. And then once you say that that's a great melody, then you instantly start thinking of the mode of no based music. That's it, I found a structure that I can now relate to. I can whistle it, and I can still relate to it. And so that's no based music. Once you listen to something like that, that's an absolutely different part of your brain working. In fact, I have been shown that's a different part of your brain. Uh, you start visualizing things sound uh, sort of has a different life to it. And at that point, it doesn't matter that much which notes exactly you're putting in. You, it might matter a little bit, but uh, I'll, show, I'll give you an example. Uh, this is, I'll be using some of my material just because it's safer, so I'm not infringing in copyright or whatever. So I'll show you a hop, sort of a dance hardcore tune that uh, and then I'll show you a tune that has notes in it, but which I consider to be not note based. So this is uh, this is one one of my older tunes. It has the beat and everything. Yes, there are notes, 
you can write it, there's a limited set of notes there, but it's not a melody. You can even probably whistle it, but you understand, your brain instantly understands, no, that's not the way to approach this. And now imagine that during that thing that you're listening, over that, I'm taking a flute and I'm starting to create a melody. And what that would do is that the innate ability of our brain to construct narratives will totally destroy the sound bit and will focus on the melody. And that's what you hear very often when you have, a, for example, you're listening to a soundtrack in a movie and it has something like that. And then suddenly somebody starts singing a song over it. And to me, it was always like, ah, lost opportunity for great aiming. <laughs> because, because they totally uh, take the, the melody narrative and that's it, that's destroyed. That's, and that's why I think that uh, it's very difficult to successfully combine both approaches. You can have just one of them. And uh, there's, I think it's the problem, it's, uh, it's the, the, the property of our brain to construct narratives. Uh, yep, so, uh, so that's, uh, the, the term sound music sucks, I think. The term electronic music sucks even more because it's just too an umbrella term. Uh, I have not landscape music, could be, but it's not necessarily landscape. It, uh, so I don't know. Sound manipulation music. So I don't know. If you ever think of a better term, do email me. Sounds. Sounds. Yeah, sounds. Most people don't get it. Like, what are you doing? Sounds. Right. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, it's it has to. I mean, when you when you're saying that you're doing ambient music, it does sell itself. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, I know the Brian Eno thing, right? Yes, and you say, yeah, sort of. So that, that makes you look cool. Meditation. Hmm? meditation. Yeah, well, yeah, meditation. What I don't like about meditation is that it usually has some new age background course, to it. Yes. So if, oh, you're getting meditation music, so it's spiritualism. Yes. And uh, well, what was your last reincarnation? You're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so finally, I want to uh, explain why I have been using Linux for this. And uh, the story of me coming to Linux was because of, project, of, of projects like Project Droning. And it's because Linux has this wonderful ability to get out of the grid. And believe it or not, in, on Windows, for example, it's very difficult to do. So in order to manipulate sound, just like I explained to you, you have to get out of the grid and get out of notes. And if you imagine a typical DAW, which has like a piano roll or something, and you want it to try to make shifting loops in there, it looks very ugly and it's very difficult to do. So you have to create a note, then you have to stretch it all the way, then you have to create another pattern, and you have to uh, turn off the grid in piano roll, for example, and you have to create a similar note that will be slightly off, then you have to load the wave files. And so it's possible, but it's not very enjoyable. While on Linux you have this, uh, this understanding that you have a looper here, you have a synthesizer here, like effects, you connect them the way you want it to, and it just runs. And uh, while on Windows, I would uh, use some sound editor, like a vintage uh, gold wave one, that doesn't even have multi-tracks. So you record just one file, and then you just mix the other file right into it. You just, you know, you just find what the, the right volume levels, and that's it, you're done. You can't edit it, but uh, I have to say that for a long time on Linux, until I started exploring some of the session managers, I wouldn't be able to edit anyway. So I was like, okay, uh, that's what I'm using. And so uh, as I arrived to Linux, I saw that this is uh, actually perfect for you know, like experimental music. Oh yeah, experimental music. Guys, you know what I want to tell you about experimental music is that this is also a bad term, I think, because well, I mean, most music is experimental, apart from the hardcore thing you thought you could get hurt. That's not experimental anymore. But uh, that is experimental. Uh, the other thing that I see a lot in like academic circles, and I don't want to offend anyone. That, I'm not saying that that's bad. I'm just saying that there is another perspective to it. Is that a, a lot of the times, by experimental music, people typically would mean sound music. And they would uh, call it experimental because they're bouncing off the ordinary normal music that you have. And so there's like this concept that there's just one type of music that we call music that is correct. And then we'll start destroying some of the forms and now it sounds more interesting. So let's take a Mozart 
and just remove the node C, that's experimental. Right, so, and uh, a lot of the stuff that you hear, like noise music, uh, this kind of stuff, it might, uh, it might, some people might position it as, well, it's interesting for a limited period of time because they're in the context of melodies. And so because there's no melody, that's like, wow, so yeah, I'm gonna listen to it, but in reality, I have no idea what it is. And so I'm, uh, uh, I'm arguing that this is not a destruction of the ordinary form. It's just a different form altogether. Uh, the example that I usually bring up is like if you have sculpture, then you are obviously using three dimensions, right? So it's a 3D object. And if you're painting, then you suddenly lost one dimension. Would you then say that painting is like a bad form of sculpture? Uh, not. You shouldn't say that, probably. Uh, but that's what many people say. They listen to electronic music and they say, well, yeah, it's not nice, but there's no theme or anything, no music, I don't know, no melodies. I can't listen to this. This is like a degradation of uh, human art form. And so on. Yes, that. Okay, so uh, it's. Uh, I, I probably said what I said, and uh, it took me like, what, 25 minutes? Good, I have to remember that. So I'll show you some of the things that I do. Uh, I'll probably want to show you the loop shifting technique because this is a very simple device that allows you to do. Uh, a lot of very cool things, and if my system survives that. Whoa, 17X runs, what do you know? There you go, that's the price of buying a new laptop and coming to the conference immediately with it. Okay, so. just to demonstrate uh, what I'm talking about. So we have a, uh, a loop loader here, so just a buffer of 250 seconds, uh, set to single recording, set now. Uh, and then let me just uh, put something into it. Uh, recording is starting. Seriously, write it down and they start playing it and they add echoes or whatever. 
but uh, in electronic music, a lot of the times you have to come up with the method that gives the results that you want. And once you understand that, for example, uh, if any of you ever tried to make like minimal house, did you try that? If you start actually in a sequencer writing down with the bass line, how do you have can you come up with a bass line like that will go like something or something or something like that? You can of course do that. But uh, I found out that it's best done the way all the DJs of the world do it. They just have like a two-beat loop here, a two-beat loop here, some randomly somewhere from the tunes. Like you have four tunes playing, you loop them in the very small loops, and then you suddenly get that super great textures that you would otherwise not think of. Because one of them is just like a bass, uh, which is like a longer bass line, but you took with something like, yeah, that's it and then the other has the drums, and then some part of a lead synthesizer from another tune, and then you have all together that way. Wow, this, this sounds really good, but you can't compose that. You have to have a method to get there. Uh, okay, and uh, so this is what I use. This is part of uh, what I do, these loop shifting things. Uh, and you know, if you're interested in ambient, I encourage you to try that because this is a very working method, although it has, I think somebody came up with it, and no, Maybe a name I forget, unfortunately, uh, in the 60s, like, and that's where the term loop shifting, loop shifting comes. And they obviously had tape loops, and they would uh, have two identical tape loops, and then they would cut one shorter, and then it would start to, to do these effects. The other thing, I wrote uh, specifically PD uh, patches uh, in modern Linux situation, doing experimental music. You can't uh, run away from PD, obviously, and so I've written specifically things uh, that I couldn't find nobody to write, you know, for me. So I'm I'm not a coder, so I have I have this problem sometimes. Basically, now these are all available for my website, and the idea is a very old one. Uh, well, actually, I mean it's old one for me, meaning that I came up with it a long time ago. But I I think that this is my original idea. It's not very complicated, but still. So here it is. Uh, yeah, you can see it. Yeah, it's called Media Loops. Uh, initially, I made it with audio, but PD has a problem uh, playing audio in real time. It has clicks and stuff like that, so I decided to use MIDI. So what it does is that each uh, each uh, thing here module is as it's like a tape loop. It's like a loop uh, that has. A, it's a little bit more sophisticated than that. It can play five different notes, and uh, once it stops playing the note. You give the uh, the amount of seconds that it has to wait. Okay, no, no, no. I'll explain it differently. So uh, you have uh, a chosen range. Let's say you say 20 seconds. So you give that module 20 seconds. Then it starts playing something. As soon as it generates a note, it will then, within the 20 seconds, randomly choose any amount, say seven. And so the second note will be played after seven seconds have passed then as that note, note stop playing, it will take again the 20 seconds, randomly choose a number, and wait that amount of number. And so that creates a very uh, cool effect of allowing you to play, to create that landscape of uh, random sounds that you would otherwise be very, would, would be very difficult to get. So let's, uh, I typically don't do, don't use that on, uh, on instruments, but we can try because that probably be more clear. A to J there. Um, yeah, there we go. So let's let's see how it performs. So right here, I have a range of ten seconds. Uh, I can put random volumes so that each time it plays random volumes, and those are uh, right now I have it's like I think it's C, uh, E, F, G, H, something like that. I don't remember. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and play this. So it shows seven out of ten, and. Uh, the first time around, it's going to wait for seven seconds. Okay, now it chose five. And so that means it will play something in five seconds. Uh, obviously, if you want effects, then you will have to press this button and it creates just the C note. Uh, and you can, of course, uh, play several of them at the same time. And uh, that will create a sort of a landscape here. Uh, but again, this tool was not made for 
necessarily for playing notes. Uh, it has durations here, so you can uh, increase durations and it will play longer notes. So as soon as the, the duration of note is over, that's when it starts calculating the other stuff. Uh, but you know, I, don't, I, don't know. I usually use some sampler for that like entry tool. And uh, let me show you the example of how, uh, how that's done. Okay, let's try it. 184 is my prediction. I think I could be wrong. Yeah, I'm wrong. Oh yeah, yeah. 178. Okay. Acoustic, 
But the, the problem is to make it sound good. I mean, of course, it's all very subjective. Uh, for example, I found the experiments, uh, like for the, yesterday we heard the piano, the, like uh, was piano combined with uh, various digital effects, as far as I understand. Uh, those experiments sound interesting to me personally. Uh, but I, th I think that it's a very narrow uh, field of work uh, because uh, in order to create I, the, the problem, I would say, is that you're, you'll be falling over in, either into one or the other. I, I don't see a reason for... Uh, it could be there, again, yeah, this is my, just my personal opinion, but I don't find it too... Uh, I don't find it necessary. Why would you try to get that boundary? Why do you need it? Why not explore just one or the other? And I think that uh, by embracing sound type music, uh, people can make much more. And that's what I don't see in many academic circles. And they're saying that, they're saying, no, we don't want to go that route. We, we want to try to sort of stay true to the melodies because that's what we're, or then either that's because what we're interested in, or maybe that's because just people feel more comfortable in that setting. I have no idea. And again, people might have good reasons and uh, they might just plainly not agree with me. But this is, you know, this is how I look. I was wondering, um, I might be wrong, but I thought part of the toolchain is also to use DIN. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, I'm using DIN as well. I can show it if you want. Yeah, okay. Uh, how many of you have ever heard about DIN anyway? Yeah, okay. So, actually, a lot of people, but let me. So, I've installed the latest version. I'm actually a fan of a much earlier one where when it has, uh, where Jack doesn't support, uh, ask for a donation. Not for donation, of course. But, uh, so basically, what it is is uh, it's uh, it's an instrument that instrument that allows you to play. Uh, let me see. Oh, it hasn't connected. Oh, it hasn't connected. Oh man, that's the usual in this situation. Okay, okay so I'll delete these for now. Oh wow, he made he made it fade out. So last time I used it, it just disappeared. Okay, so basically what it, what it is, is that it's a voice, uh, so, so I'm dragging my mouse, uh, and it plays an old C. If I go here, it will play an old D. And of course, the great thing is about it, that you can make vibrate. And uh, it has uh, the, uh, what is called, like the droners.
record 10 piece into a loop, then uh, multiply that loop, or actually sometimes record three loops, and then I let, let the loop shift. Uh, but there's like uh, a team that think it's, okay, let's try this again. Uh, um, 71, okay. So, uh, 71, where I think I played it actually live. Oh yeah, so. Okay, so here's Tim, and that was actually played live for 45 minutes, like sitting there. And at that point in time, I had a lot of time at work, so I was sitting right at work. And that's oh, so you know the, oh, the tool set you used. So the notes were generated using media loops, and you can hear that they're like kind of random. Uh, uh, actually, the power of media loops, if you're going to use it, is all in the timing. So Uh, it, uh, where, where, where is it? 
ahead. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah, right. So uh, it, it, it has like a filter that is sequenced. So you can have, uh, how do you call it, like sample and hold kind of effect. Very good. So I'm using that sometimes. Yeah, so, okay, any more? Okay, thanks. Thank you very much.